Yes, uh, well, I hope that the break time was enough for us to digest what we learned at the first session. And now we're going to move on to the last session of the day, the Civil Society Talk Concert. On site, we're joined by Professor Park Yon Lan, who is professor at Gangnam University and a member of the ASEM Global Aging Center Expert Group, who will be moderating the session. And also the panelist, President Chu hyun of Help Age Korea. Other panelists will be joining us online and now I'm going to pass on to uh, pass on my mic to the moderator please thank you good afternoon uh, I'm Young Ram Park uh, it's very um, great honor for me to be moderating a very special session on civil society talk uh, to concert actually uh, sharing and exploring uh, rights-based community building practices in the previous session, we learned that the psychological well-being of the older people uh, is maybe uh, lower than our expectations, and we have uh, much room for interventions. And unfortunately, the COVID-19 has worsened the situation. So uh, there are many challenges ahead of us. And uh, this afternoon, the session is devoted to uh, listening to the change makers uh, who are trying, struggling to change the situation of this, the well-being of the older people uh, in Asia and in Europe. So uh, it's my great honor to present uh, eight different speakers with five different projects in Asia and Europe. And first uh, presentation will be made by uh, President Hyun Se Cho, who is the director of the Help Age Korea. He will make a presentation on the situation in Korea and his projects with Help Age Korea. And I will give you a brief uh, introduction of President uh, Cho. Uh, he has been the president of the Help Age Korea for a number of years. He has been playing a pivotal role in building older people's associations in Korea, Cambodia, and Vietnam, and Myanmar for the development of self-help self -help groups as their sustainable mechanism since 2004 and taking the leading role in forming OPA leaders in regional events in Asia. He's been instrumental in promoting regional initiatives for age care policies and influenced the governments of ASEAN members' countries to turn their focus from institutional care to community care for more than 10 years since 2004. He has been serving as a member of cons Consultation Committee of Human Rights Policy in National Human Rights Commission in Korea since 2015, and has joined ASEM Global Aging Center in Korea as a board member in 2018. Uh, I'm very honored to have him as one of the panelists today, and I will we'll listen to his presentation for about 20 minutes now. Thanks for inviting me to this event and giving me an opportunity to present our, sh our experience in Korea and other countries. My name is Jo Hyun Se. I work for HelpAge Korea. HelpAge Korea is an organization working for, especially for low income older people in Korea and other countries. Uh, in this session, uh, I'd like to talk about the issue on social isolation and loneliness. And in responding to this issue, uh, I will share our project, Older People's Separate Group. Let's look at the photo. Uh, I want to introduce one older woman. She is a low-income older people living alone. She says, I am always at home during the COVID-19 pandemic. I cannot go anywhere. I cannot do anything all day. There is no one to help me. Low-income older people live 
on a minimum standard of living without sufficient income in Korea. They are suffering not only from financial difficulties, housing problems, but also mental health. Older people living alone are more vulnerable to mental health without adequate family support. It is known that they feel more lonely or depressed and have a higher suicide rate. Low-income older people living alone are the most at risk from social isolation and loneliness during the COVID-19 pandemic. These risks became visible. Uh, let's look at the report of WHO on social isolation and loneliness first. Social isolation and loneliness among older people are widespread. For instance, 20 to 34 percent of older people in China, Europe, Latin America, and the States are lonely. Social isolation and loneliness are harmful. They shorten older people's lives and damage their mental and physical health and quality of life. In this report, WHO offers an opportunity for all stakeholders to act together internationally, regionally, nationally, and locally to reduce social isolation and loneliness among older people. We are concerned about social isolation among older people. They are increasingly socially isolated due to retirement, loss of a, loss of a spouse and friends, disability, or health problems. In addition, the number of older people living alone is increasing due to the nuclear family. There is growing concern that they are becoming more vulnerable without sufficient family context and social context. They are negatively affected by COVID-19 and social isolation policy during COVID-19 pandemic. Young people have been able to maintain social connections through SNS, Zoom, but older people have many limitations in using digital technology. Research shows that the risk of depression in old age more than doubles due to the long-term impact of COVID-19 pandemic. Older people have already been socially isolated for a long time. And the COVID-19 pandemic has put them at greater risk of isolation. Uh, let's look at the situation of older people in Korea. Like here is statistics on social isolation level, which is released by National Statistical Office. The social isolation level in 2021 averaged 34%, up about 6%, compared to 28% in 2019, before COVID-19. This is the highest record ever. In particular, the social isolation level of over six years old was almost 42%, the highest compared to the other age groups. On the top of that, the number of older people living alone is 1.67 million as of 2021, accounting for almost 20% of the total older people, and it is increasing. In summary, older people are more socially isolated than other age groups in Korea. Moreover, this problem will become more serious in the future. How to reduce social isolation? It is known that increasing social connections can reduce um, social isolation. There are various approaches in responding to this social isolation. Digital technology, co-housing, community care, community building. I I'd like to share our experience based on the project that we are doing, self help group for older people, of uh, self help group for low income older people.
Um, older people separate group, it is a small community where low-income older people come together to form a self-help group and practice participation and sharing activities. Here are qualification of members. Members are 65 years of age or older who live in a poor area. The proportion of low-income older people among all members should be at least 70%. It requires members to understand and agree to the spirit of a separate group called AG Helps. I, I will uh, explain more about AG Helps because it is not easy to understand in the beginning the concept of AG Helps. But it is important. Its meaning is helping older people to help others. <clears throat> in order to implement AG Helps, there is a role of Happy Korea, it's an organizer. We are not just a service provider. We help older people organize and engage in self-help groups. There is also a role of older people. It's a contributor. Older people should not expect to receive services only as beneficiaries. They should engage in activities of participation and sharing for self-help groups and local communities. Actually, it is not easy process for us to persuade older people accept this concept, AG Helps, because many of them say, I'm the one who need help, not the one who can help. But we, we try to persuade them to get them to accept. Uh, I will brief uh, the formation of self-help group. Um, this is the formation, of, formation process, selection of target area, recruitment of members, election of leaders, and all members meeting. The formation process is complete when all members, at the all members meeting, all members agree to form this group. Once the group is formed, Happy Korea start to support their activities. There are three goals of activities. Strengthening bond, improvement of autonomy, participation and sharing. The first, the first goal is to strengthen the bond. For that, we support activities to help members become familiar with the self-help group activities and build close relationships among members. Activities include doing gymnastics together, making crafts, going on a picnic. Second goal is to improve autonomy. For that, we support older people to take ownership of separate groups and operate autonomously. Activities include electionable leaders, leaders meeting, general meetings, management of, management of membership fees, leadership training. The last goal is participation and sharing. For that, we support older people to participate in community activities and sharing activities for their neighbors. Activities include children's puppet show. So members go to the care center and perform the puppet show for children and members do some fundraising at the co uh, community bazaar and support for low-income children. And members do participate in ADA campaign of Happy International, which is an advocacy activity for voice of older people. Now let's look at the changes in old, old people. We asked uh, members, older people, uh, what is an older people's self-help group for you? Answers are, this is the place to reduce my loneliness because I have friends. This is a place where I can feel healthy and full of energy because I do gymnastics together. This is where I try to be an example to the younger generation. It gives me confidence. 
This is where we think about what we can do for society. We can get the joy of sharing. We also asked community people and community uh, local NGOs, what impressions did you get from all the people's self-help group? Answers are the negative perception of older people as stubborn, selfish, and helpless has changed. A bright smile looks good. It is moving to see low-income older people helping younger people in need. I feel like older people are contributors. Working together, we learn a lot and have a lot of fun. I picked up some keywords related to changes. We can see two photos, two people. The left one is low-income older people living alone. Here are words, keywords of them. Loneliness, depressed, weak, beneficiary, isolation, suicide, negative image, selfish, happiness. The other one is Q, are keywords related to members of separate group. Positive image, bright smile, friends, contributor, healthy life, help others, communication, confidence, joy of sharing, and voice. It looks small, but we can feel the changes. Um, I would like to share some uh, status that we are, we are doing for separate groups in Korea. There are 12 locations across the country, and uh, we are working uh, in a local area. We, we are working uh, with, in collaboration with the eight local uh, partner organizations, and members are about 210 at the moment, and we are in the process to increase the number of separate group in the future. And we've been um, supporting uh, separate groups in other countries for many years. Um, uh, their characteristics are as follows. They target low-income older people living in, in, in poor areas. Their activities include income generation, health promotion, and home care. They also do fundraising and advocacy for self-help groups and communities. Here are numbers of self-help groups formed by Happy Age Korea since 2008. 85 in Cambodia, 68 in Myanmar, and 283 in Vietnam. Now, uh, I'd like to share uh, the challenges that we have and some suggestions. Our challenges. Continuing education and interventions are needed to improve the capacity of older people. We need to provide more opportunities for them to engage and work with local organizations in the community. We need to expand more self-help groups to other areas in the future. And I have some suggestions. More statistical data and research on social isolation and loneliness among older people are needed. It was very difficult for me to find the statistics related to loneliness among older people in Korea. And loneliness among older people is harmful and should not be overlooked. It is necessary to raise awareness on this issue continuously, not temporarily, through something like a campaign to end loneliness. And interventions from society, including governments, is needed to reduce social isolation and loneliness among older people. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for sharing uh, with us your experiences and a uh, long time project on self help group uh, in Korea. And this model is, I, I think, uh, one of very uh, uh, 
uh, standard model for HelpAge International, and there are different models of HelpAge groups around the country. And um, I'm, I'm sure we'll have more time to talk about his uh, project later on. And now I'd like to move on to the second project. And as I have been counting, uh, we have eight different uh, speakers today, but uh, we will be discuss discussing five different projects. And there are about eight countries involved in these projects. So I hope that the audience will try to follow uh, uh, all these uh, different projects and different stories. And, and we could come up with what's going on in the civil society uh, in terms of uh, tackling the issue of loneliness and um, I, I think what we're trying to deliver is that uh, building community is very important. Uh, the environment, the safe and caring environment for older people in different regions, different communities is very important. And we are trying to discover what are the initiatives that have been developed. So the next project will talk about uh, what's called a dreamlike neighborhood. And we have two speakers to talk about this project. So let me introduce two speakers, uh, one from AG Platform Europe. Uh, she's uh, Elenia Gano, and I'll give her a, a bio a little bit later. And, and one person from Querum, and she is Suzanne Dobner. So we will uh, listen to two speakers in uh, one project. And first, uh, let me introduce Ms. Elenia uh, Gano, who has been a research project manager uh, in AG Platform Europe. She has been uh, working uh, directly on European projects related to universal design, health and e-health, accessibility, new technologies, uh, rooting for a genuine development of older adults in projects and disseminating the project's results with the goal to bring scientific evidence to European policymakers and, and stakeholders. So she has joined Age uh, Europe in 2009, and she holds a master's degree in European policies, an inter-university certificate in ethics and care, and also a certificate on healthy aging for impact in the 21st century. Uh, before joining the Age, uh, she worked for private and public entities, implementing a wealth of European projects dealing with uh, territorial cooperation, youth volunteering, and corporate uh, social responsibility. So she has extensive uh, experience in projects in Europe. And our second uh, speaker is Mrs. Suzanne Dobner. She is a researcher in, in the organization called Quarum. Uh, she joined Karam uh, Cultural and, and Social Research in 2019, where she is developing and implementing, uh, coordinating uh, European and national projects. Uh, together with uh, uh, Anita Rapport, she is currently coordinating a dreamlike neighborhood project since 2004. Uh, Karam has successfully planned, developed, and coordinated and implemented and evaluated and supported projects at the local, regional, national, and European level as well. Uh, she has a background in sociology and urban studies uh, at the University of Vienna, and she works for her work focuses on participation and social participation of older people, age appropriate urban development. Uh, active mobility and health promotion. So we have two speakers with various uh, uh, backgrounds, um, and now I'd like to give the floor to the first speaker. Hello, good afternoon. I hope you can hear me and you can see our presentation on screen. Just wave in case it's not the case because I can't see you now any longer. A big thank you indeed for uh, the nice presentation and for having invited uh, the Dream Like Neighborhood Project, Age Platform Europe and Queram on stage today. Um, my colleague Susanne and I are indeed delighted to share some of our uh, key insights and show you the impact of our work in various European countries. I will first introduce you to the framework of our action, its rights based approach to community building, so the challenges we faced and the principles we embraced along uh, the journey. 
Susanna will then provide you with an overview of how we designed and implemented activities at grassroots level in Austria, Slovenia, the Czech Republic and the Netherlands, um, grounded on reciprocal connections and learning, raising awareness on older people's needs in their neighborhood and involving others. It has been so far a 20 month or long journey with over 80 people involved, where meaningful seeds, as we say, have been sown and we hope to see some blossoms and plants in the coming years as well. As the UN says, human rights are the language of basic human wants in keeping with the notion of dignity and equality uh, of the human person. They help in articulating wants um, and the response of those who have to address those wants. Taking a human rights-based approach is about making sure that people's rights are put at the center of policies and practices, but it's not only about a, a top-down approach made of standards, of laws, of conventions. It's also a bottom-up flow of participation, accountability, non-discrimination, empowerment, and legality. The so-called panel principle from participation, accountability, non-discrimination, empowerment, and legality indeed. And this starts from our communities, from our neighborhoods, from ourselves, as eloquently said in this quote. Differently nurtured and cherished across cultures and geographical latitudes, at least in Europe, um, neighborhoods and local connections shapes the way we are and the way we grow across the lifespan. And this process does not stop at a certain age. Our neighborhoods also have a role in the way we grow old. And the Dream Like Neighborhood Project embraced this perspective to connect people and especially older people at local level. With family ties getting weaker and geographical distances getting bigger, the project facilitated neighborhood groups where older people meet regularly and support each other in redetecting, in bringing in their talents, in fulfilling their dreams, in facing the challenges of everyday life and finding ways to active, actively contribute to their communities. Our relationships in our local communities are at the precious. Local bounds and networks give us a sense of belonging, offer security, shape and support our own identity. Neighborhoods evolve with the people as communities are, are alive as far as people are living there. As we grow old, we can benefit from neighborhoods even more. For those of us with mobility issues, with health-related restrictions, and uh, who live alone and are at greater risk of social exclusions, as we just heard, local communities can be a precious source of support as they are near, within walking distance, and offer opportunities to connect with others and exchange services, or simply a kind word, word and a smile. They are one of the most powerful antidotes against loneliness and contribute considerably to our well-being and our health. And you will hear, of course, more details on the stories gathered and the project input from my colleague Susanna in a while. Despite this key role in shaping our identity and quality of life throughout generations, our communities suffer from chronic and structural changes, challenges, such as, and I named only a few here, uh, here uh, pure access, uh, for instance, inaccessible public spaces, gentrifications of cities, uh, organizational issues such as including uh, the lack of coordination between communities, shortages of human and material resources, insufficient funding, administrative barrier, bureaucracy, and of course prejudices and stereotypes affecting people differently. Let us think only about uh, the LGBTQI communities, people with disabilities, children, and older people, among others. And with respect to this latter group, um, the very large and very heterogeneous group of older people, ageism is particularly widespread. The WHO report, uh, Global Report on Ageism in 2021, stated that globally one in two people are ageist against older people. And in Europe, the only region for which WHO had data at the time, one in three reports having been a target of ageism. As WHO says, ageism 
as a serious and far-reaching consequences for people's health, well-being, and human rights. For older people, ageism is associated with a shorter lifespan, poorer physical and mental health, slower recovery from disability and cognitive decline, and among others, ageism reduces older people's quality of life, um, increase their social isolation and loneliness, both of which are association, associated with health, serious health problems, and contribute to poverty and financial insecurity in old age. And one recent estimate, and this is still from WHO, shows that ageism costs society billions of dollars. It is then easy to understand why neighborhoods are crucial a crucial and their empowerment alongside with the empowerment of their people is key. As stated in the Dream Like Neighborhood Handbook, we need neighborhood that don't marginalize the residents, but make them visible and honor them. We need neighborhoods that celebrate their inhabitants, neighborhoods that invite each, other, each of us, regardless of our diversity, to connect meaningful with each other, contribute our ideas, our talents, and to co-create our social environments. Neighborhoods that enable and empower us to live and age well. And the greater political and societal focus on communities, um, neighborhoods and care brought by the COVID-19 pandemic is an opportunity for wider debates and uh, uh, around community building and for make more equal societies. According to each platform Europe, the views of older people, and especially those with care and support needs, have, to, have most often been overlooked in debates. Yet, a right-based approach involves, uh, first and foremost, listening to older persons and representative organizations to ensure their participation uh, and enabling a true societal debate to define directions reform should take. As stated by the UN, human rights standards and principles are a value-based prescriptive narration, essentially anchored in a legalistic language of the treaties, and are not always directly amenable to policy making and implementation. They have to be transformed into a message that is more tangible, more operational, and indeed there is a need for human rights advocates to be advocates to be equipped with an approach, methodology, and specific tools to enable a better communication with a broad set of stakeholders. And that's indeed the role that each platform has been taking. As the voice of all the people in Europe, we call for environments and systems that empower all the people at all stages in their lives, enable their participation and support their autonomy, ensuring all the people can be part of the society as equal and full citizens. Being an association of and for all the people, we consult them, we work with them and set opportunities for all the people to participate directly in the debates they are, that they are more is interested in. Participation, especially of those at risk and of those experiences, experiencing some form of vulnerability is necessary for policy to become more inclusive and more appropriate to address diverse form, forms of disadvantages. Participation also involves empowering individuals to participate in decision-making and to claim their rights. And as experienced in the, in the Dreamlike Neighborhood Project, the best opportunities for older people to participate are those set up by them and with them rather than for them. People know best about what makes encounters and activities meaningful to them. And now Susanna will show you different ways of building communities and participate. Yes, thank you very much. Full screen I again. Hope, I hope you can see my slides now. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much um, also from my side for inviting us to this forum. And thank you to my colleague, Elenia, for um, kind of setting the stage um, for me now to be able to talk about some uh, more concrete activities that uh, we have been doing and that have been implementing uh, within the Dream Like Neighborhood project. Um, as also we have heard um, before, and I'm sure all of you are aware and have made various experiences, there are many different ways and kind of um, strings um, to build communities and participate um, for and with older people. Um, within our project, the Dream Like Neighborhood project, we have 
um, throughout our activities um, identified uh, four uh, four ways, um, which for all um, each um, one of them uh, we have um, brought some concrete activities and examples with us today. Um, older people get together and connect. Um, older people express their perspectives, um, contribute their knowledge and raise awareness um, for their own um, issues. Um, older people explore their neighborhoods and involve others. And older people learn and support each other. So these are all um, things that um, uh, we were um, lucky <laughs> to um, have experience within um, our project and our activities that, as Elenia was referring to earlier, have been implemented um, in um, different European countries. Um, I will now uh, talk about some examples for um, kind of the theme of um, getting together and connecting uh, with other uh, people within our um, project. We have made um, various experiences um, with the formats of um, storytelling cafes and informal um, chats, uh, which were very well uh, received. On the picture um, on the right hand side, uh, you see um, a neighborhood group in Prague in the Czech uh, Republic um, that have organized a kind of informal chat or storytelling um, meeting um, uh, with the topic of um, their childhood. So everyone was also invited to bring a photo, which, um, yeah, which really um, also helped to break the ice and establish new and deeper connections among, um, among the group of participants. And the setting and format of having these um, informal chats and um, storytelling cafes, yeah, really also um, often makes the common but also different perspectives visible. People are being heard and have the chance to chat and express um, their opinions and their yeah, experiences um, uh, with, uh, within a group and a nice kind of uh, yeah, safe and comfortable setting. Um, and the uh, experiences that we have also made is that often you start with one topic, it being the being your childhood or being traveling or often or cooking or exchanging recipes um, that every theme contains the entire world. So you start with one topic and then uh, you end up uh, with a lot of other topics and also um, yeah, starting from one topic often it uh, breaks the ice um, to talk about um, other sometimes more uh, yeah also sensitive and personal things. Uh, so this is one of the formats um, that we have made experiences with and that have been implemented. Um, one also um, example from Vienna, uh, where we've been implemented uh, kind of regular in informal chats um, at a, a pensioners uh, club in Vienna. A pensioners club is, um, yeah, there is situated all over the country. Um, in almost in every district um, in Vienna, in Austria, um, where um, people can get together and have um, get a free coffee or water and can play cards and join certain activities. Um, and also within the last two years, which I'm sure um, all of us here um, made uh, experiences with um, personal, but also within our work, um, due to the uh, COVID pandemic, the club was closed and contact was um, was quite loose. Um, so we really tried also within the frame of the Dream Like Neighborhood project with our cooperation partners, the Vienna Pensioners uh, Residence um, Fund to um, with, with setting up a format or trying an activity to really bring the people together again and also build a sense of of belonging and with setting a rather what seems a rather small impulse um, to um, yeah offer new activities also to the to the clubs. So what we've been doing is organizing uh, regular chats as we call it. Um, um, also, you could also call it a storytelling um, cafe, but with a very low threshold. Um, uh, we would say uh, we had this every every two weeks um, and uh, chose different topics to start with. But as I was saying earlier, you often start with one topic and then, um, yeah, while chatting and exchanging, 
uh, you end up with uh, with somewhere completely different. Um, and also after the first one or two chats, um, the participants uh, often chose their own topic for the next kind of meeting. Um, so it's we have also yeah asked what they would be interested to talk about. Um, you can see as you can see an impression um, of my colleague Anita uh, Rampauer um, with the uh, informal one of the informal chat sessions. Um, yeah, where she's uh, holding up some questions <laughs> uh, for everyone to join in. Um, I've uh, yeah, we've also collected some some voices, um, which I think um, yeah might bring some flesh <laughs> to the to the story. So to say, um, one of the members, Elfriede, she said, "I'm also visiting another club and play cards there. However, we don't talk; we just play, and I miss it." That's why I come here, because I would like to talk, to share experiences, and I would like to learn from others. And it's wonderful. I haven't laughed as much as I did today for a long time. And another member, Helene, um, said, it's a good way to bring people together. People get to talk they might not otherwise talk to. So also... Um, yeah, es establishing new connection and this format of the informal chats with having one topic um, is quite open for um, yeah for many people to join. And as I was saying earlier, is a low, rather low threshold format um, for people to join and maybe for the first time just sit there and listen for a while and then um, yeah then uh, join in. There is also a short um, video clip that we did that um, I don't think we have <laughs> enough um, time now, but I would uh, yeah definitely invite uh, everyone to to have a look um, at our short um, short video of the informal chats. It's also with English uh, subtitles. Um, yeah, I I assume you will uh, receive the presentation afterwards. Um, as for another kind of topic or string uh, that we have um, identified throughout our projects is uh, the importance to uh, for all the people to express their perspectives and contribute their knowledge and also to raise awareness for their own uh, issues. Um, we have um, brought here an example from our colleagues in uh, Ljubljana, Slovenia, um, where um, the third age university in Ljubljana has, um, yeah, Took, took the chance to, um, uh, with one of their study groups um, with older uh, people to organize an outdoor exhibition that you see on the, um, on the left photo, um, where, where um, citizens of Ljubljana were interviewed and could express their perspectives on the neighborhood and also on the neighborhood changes. And the exhibition was on a, a public a public square um, with the with very nice portraits being taken and then short statements uh, also written next to the pictures. Um, so really having the yeah um, the importance of being visible and also being visible in in public space. Um, um, older people in kind of all their facets and also being being an opportunity to share their opinion and voices about neighborhood and neighborhood changes. Um, there is also a, a film that our partners in Slovenia did also with English subtitles, um, if someone wants to uh, yeah, have a look at it um, in a bit more detail. Um, another um, activity um, that our partners in Ljubljana organized where we were um, lucky enough to be able to, to join um, was an outdoor public event um, that you see on the photo um, from an, that uh, the, the members of the Third Age um, group in Ljubljana organized together with a, an architecture magazine called Outsider, where um, the um, older learners, participants of the Third Age University organized kind of an open air uh, discussion a table um, also sharing their thoughts and their demands and their wishes on um, neighborhoods in Ljubljana. And it was very nice because the event was open, as you can see here. It was 
really on the kind of on the street next to a sidewalk. So people were, of course, invited, but also some passersby were able to, yeah, um, just stand there and listen. And this again, um, kind of stressing the importance um, of um, older people also being visible in public space as one, one example and one activity that um, has been going on. Um, I'm now um, kind of going back to an activity uh, in Vienna and also I'm back kind of to the storytelling and informal chat event. Um, we have also, um, you can see on the picture, had a kind of outdoor informal chat session um, organized with the participants from the Pensioners Fund um, that we've been co cooperating with. Um, and yeah, this was also quite a big event also for participants to um, go out. It happened in another district. Um, so it was also kind of a little excursion um, for them. They formed a small group and organized their way there together. Um, so it's all of these um, yeah, things that sometimes um, appear small, but then have really big impacts on, on kind of the, the connection and getting to know each other in the group. Um, and we had an informal chat on kind of the what is your dream neighborhood and it was a public event that we were able to join with our chatting table and also everyone was invited to sit down and yeah talk to our uh, participants. So this is another kind of example of also being public and being visible. Um, and in the kind of a theme of older people exploring their neighborhood together and also involving others. Um, I uh, would like to um, say a few words about what happened in Prague in the Czech Republic. Um, our partner there, um, Leto Kuch, uh, organized um, many excursions with their group of volunteers. Um, to different places and yeah, also kind of breaking the barrier um, of visiting uh, new places and exploring new things. Um, just to give you an example, in the area, in the neighborhood where the organization Letoko is situated, there is a lot of new development, a lot of high rises being built, a lot of modern buildings. Um, so the um, group kind of took this as a chance together to explore some of these new places and also talk with um, developers and architects. Um, so there was, they were able to exchange um, some insights, but also for older people kind of being heard about their, maybe their also their fears of what the changes are gonna bring to the neighborhood, but also their demands of what it needs for also them to feel comfortable and safe to move in this rather fast changing neighborhood. So they have um, organized this. Then we have yeah another <laughs> example that uh, you also see on the picture together. They visited a virtual game room. So also kind of um, these new kind of digital um, topics um, they were able to explore uh, together and yeah had had quite some fun from what we have what we have heard. Um, and also that kind of excursion, um, yeah, then being uh, being um, leading to a to a lot of um, discussions and exchanges among the participants. Um, and then kind of the third string, um, older people learn and support each other. Um, we have um, kind of gathered some experiences from our partners, um, iFedemy in the Netherlands, um, where within their neighborhood um, groups, um, they have um, also set up different activities. And um, you see a, um, yeah, a short citation from Jamal here, a member of the, one of the neighborhood group who said, I want to learn and I want to get to know residents from other neighborhoods. So also, yes, setting kind of the the frame and offering formats for people to getting to know sometimes their neighbors, which maybe they see, but they don't really talk to each other, but also um, people from other um, neighborhoods. So they really did a lot of 
um, yeah, activities and um, trying things in the Netherlands. You see some pictures here. They have um, within their neighborhood group, they have um, set up uh, cooking sessions. Um, as, um, yeah, we also believe kind of food also brings people uh, together. So that was very well received. Um, and then on the left hand side, you also see a discussion and exchange um, among a group um, about kind of their their wishes and dreams um, for for themselves, but also for for their neighborhood, um, which similarly to Brack, um, the neighborhood in De Hague in the Netherlands, uh, where the group um, was meeting, is also quite fast changing. Um, a lot of redevelopment um, happening, um, but. Besides that, also, um, yeah, the group kind of the topics that came up in the group was also quite diverse. Um, yeah, healthcare, also digital skills, it's of course, very, very important, and um, financial um, information and supplies. Um, so, very various um, activities, but also coming together regularly and kind of going with the flow of asking also what the group wanted which topics they are interested in but also kind of which hands-on activities they might they, they might enjoy and some voices um, from the groups in a, a participant in the hague um, said it feels good when you can do something for and with each other and contribute to a better neighborhood and a participant in Prague um, said the neighborhood group again opened the world for us. Now it's a different world for us. We start living again. And uh, from Helene, participant of the um, informal chats in Vienna, it's a good way to bring people together. People get to talk to people they might not otherwise talk to. So some, some voices and insights from our participants directly. And yeah, sharing, sharing some concluding thoughts. Um, are the approaches uh, that we um, that we tried and are trying um, worked uh, worked well um, to bring people together and shape supporting neighborhoods. And as you can see on the drawing um, on the right hand side, and also what Elenia was referred to, the kind of um, yeah, putting seeds and then you kind of see what grows and what comes out of it. This was also kind of part of our approach and really going with the different contexts, different um, yeah, national geographical contexts, different groups, different interests. Um, and one, um, one very important aspect, um, which is always important um, when implementing projects for us is kind of the question of what comes afterwards. Um, how sustainable, to, so to speak, um, are our um, activities um, and implementations. And just to give you some um, examples, um, in The Hague, in the Netherlands, um, the welfare organization that our partner has been cooperating with um, is still continuing to organize more neighborhood groups, which is wonderful. Um, and also in Prague, in the Czech Republic, um, the volunteers of our partners, Letoku, now kind of the volunteers themselves organize regular meetings they set up a whatsapp group um to yeah to connect and organize themselves so it doesn't really need a moderator anymore um which is nice um our partner even said that now they are kind of invited to their activities and not the other way around which is i think quite quite nice um and in ljubljana in slovenia um, yeah, also the third H University, our partner there, um, they have kind of included their results and findings and discussions also in their learning groups and are going now further, um, especially also with being public, publicly visible. Um, and in Vienna, um, which is the activities that um, my colleague Anita and I have been implemented together with the Pensioners Fund, they are also um, interested now to transfer the concept and the format of the informal chats, um, the storytelling cafes to other clubs um, situated in the city. Um, so we have, yeah, we are in discussion with them to also see how, um, how to transfer 
the format and activity to other clubs. And then I have one last slide, I think. <laughs> um, some lessons kind of learned, trying to um, conclude um, from our various activities. Um, some of the lessons we learned are that words matter, how you call activities or formats um, to keep a rather um, yeah, low threshold. Um, also that structure and regularity helps um, for people knowing yeah, um, how, how many meetings there will be, who is going to be there, what time. So to have sort of a, some sort of um, plan while still keeping a bit flexible, um, for example, with the topics of a chat, for instance. Um, and yeah, people really connect via their stories, via their personal experiences. Um, the groups um, kind of meander and grow, which also um, an experience that we have definitely made. Um, the snowball, snowball roll, snowball um, effect, which I'm sure is um, probably nothing new to many of you here. Um, and also visibility empowers and inspires and also inspires others. Um, and then kind of the, the, the step of also letting go of a group and at best um, um, a group kind of, uh, yeah, um, grew together and then organizes things themselves or a cooperation partner or some other mo moderator is um, willing and able to continue with the group. But that's of course quite uh, different regarding yeah, in regards to the context. And um, just some uh, short information. Um, we have um, we're currently working on our last uh, publications for the project, which you can all find on our website, the dreamlikeneighborhood.eu. Um, um, we have a fact sheet and a handbook where we've also kind of gathered and discussed our um, results and our activities and some concluding thoughts. And there will also be an online resource kit with many of our methods and activities that we've been using uh, within the project. Um, so yeah, everyone is invited to have a look here. And then um, the really uh, almost uh, last slide, um, we have a final event within the project um, on October the 5th. Um, it's an online event and yeah, a warm welcome to everyone who wants to hear more about the project or our activities and get to know our partners, which um, yeah, which we are just representing here today, but the Dream Like Neighborhood um, partnership, as you can see here, consists of many great organizations and um, yeah, they're very motivated and enthusiastic people. And now I want to yeah, stop the presentation and thank you for listening and hope the jumping between different countries wasn't too confusing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you uh, for sharing very uh, innovative and uh, inspiring a project, which is called A Dream Like Neighborhood. Uh, you have been working so hard to uh, develop this project for a number of years, and hopefully uh, we have learned about how to prevent isolation and loneliness uh, through your project. And I, I think one of the key elements of your project is building a relationship among all the people and also uh, having them uh, do things together. And I was really stuck with what you said about uh, 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 how the, uh, the seas grow <laughs> over the times. Uh, and actually, I in the beginning, I thought about allocating about 20 to 25 minutes for each project, but uh, we spent quite uh, more um, on this uh, neighborhood project because uh, we were talking about four different countries. We visited Netherlands, Slovenia, and Czech Republic, and Austria. So um, we have visited different countries in Europe, and now we uh, it's time to move to uh, Vietnam in Asia. And now I, I'd like to introduce to you uh, our next speaker, who will be uh, talking about comprehensive community-based uh, care services through international help self-help clubs in Vietnam. Uh, the speaker is uh, Ms. Chu Vieng 
Nga, uh, who is the senior manager of the Help Page Vietnam. And she's uh, currently uh, working in this project uh, as one of uh, as one of the uh, national specialists on intergenerational self help club, which is called ISHC, and it is a model of sustainable, inclusive, and cost effective community driven development model initiated by Help Age, and uh, she, uh, this organization has been a local partner since 2006. Uh, ISHC is a multifunctional, uh, covering protection of rights and entitlements, income security, healthy aging, long-term care, and social protection and lifelong learning, as we learned from uh, President Joe as well. And the model has served, received first prize of healthy aging prize for Asian innovation. So, so far, Vietnam's prime minister has announced three decisions to replicate ISHC nationwide, including integration of ISHC into national action plan. So uh, now I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Nunga to uh, make her presentation. Um, greetings. I hope you have been able to see my screen. Um, hello, uh, my name is Nga. I'm manager of uh, Help Age International in Vietnam. And it is my pleasure to invite you to Vietnam and uh, visit a community development model that currently is providing comprehensive community-based care services to directly to more than 400,000 people in Vietnam. And this model is uh, recognized by the government as a national model. And in 2020, won the grand prize of the Healthy Aging Prize for Asian Innovation. So for the start, um, the intergenerational self-help club model that I'm introducing to you, or ISHC for short, was established in the context that Vietnam is rapidly aging. In fact, uh, we, uh, the population of older people in Vietnam will double in the next two decades. And meanwhile, we are a lower middle income country with limited resources. As a result, we are facing with the situation of getting old before getting rich, and we will have some challenges to meet the increasing care needs. And as a result, we will need a model that is not only um, be able to replicate in Vietnam with the current resources, uh, resources available, but also to be able to meet the diverse and growing care needs of the population. Uh, in Vietnam, the rights uh, for care, health care and social care, it's put in the law, uh, in the law of older people uh, in 2009. And uh, so it is a basic right of older people protected uh, by the government. And when we speak about the care needs here, let's look at the situation in Vietnam. So according to a 2019 census, 15% of older persons uh, are have difficulty in self-care. And that means for 100 person, 50, 15 will need uh, long-term care services. Um, that is the situation in the pictures in Vietnam. And, and also we do not forget about the remaining 85% as well, who are uh, majority healthy and be able to take care of themselves. And we need what we call the preventive long-term care. And uh, a model needs to respond to the needs of both uh, of, of this diverse group of older people who um, are both needs in terms of long-term care and preventive long-term care. So ISHC is such a model that provides a comprehensive uh, community-based uh, care needs uh, to meet the diverse care needs of older persons. And 
the ISHC has been endorsed by the government to become a na national model in uh, 2016 and now implemented in 61 out of 63 uh, provinces of Vietnam. And the model is also included in national uh, in national policies and programs as a way to re re to realize the rights of older people to uh, to care uh, to healthcare and social care. And uh, the model is being replicated in Vietnam with increasing uh, amount uh, with time. And currently, we have about uh, 4,000 clubs uh, in all over Vietnam. And uh, by 2025, the government is uh, has planned to replicate uh, and we will have about 6,500 6, clubs by 2025. So about the... Uh, ISHC model. Why was it? Uh, why was it recognized by the government and also welcomed by the community? Uh, it is because in the design of the model, it's uh, for the older people and by older people. And uh, the club is community based, a village based, so it's uh, very highly accessible to older people in the uh, to older people um, in the at the grassroots levels. Uh, and uh, it is important because uh, many times we have uh, we have policies and um, we have policies and programs at the national level and to implement and to translate those programs at the grassroots level we need foundation at the grassroots level to be able to translate the uh, benefits to older people in the field and so the ISHC is, uh, has its village based to be available and approachable to even the most unreached and the model is entirely self-managed and self-sustained by local community members and on the belief that uh, the uh, decision-making uh, authority and process is given directly to community groups and they are the ones who understand best their needs and uh, they are the best judge of how their lives can be improved and uh, they are the and they are resources the driving force for development and this is very important because the services provided by the club will then be tailored and be decided by the communities to best fit with their needs. This is the organization structure of the ISHC model. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have the club management board who, uh, who will uh, represent the club members to, uh, to uh, help manage the club on a daily basis. And then the club will be divided into smaller groups, uh, smaller groups uh, with a group leader for each and then uh, for easier management. And also the clubs uh, have uh, other interest groups as well to meet uh, the many different uh, needs of the community members. And among the club management board, the club leaders, they are representatives of older people and younger people, male and female, and the club leaders are voted by the members themselves and endorsed by the local club authority. And uh, one of the special things that makes the intergenerational Sahab club different from conventional models is that the membership of the club is very diverse. Uh, we have uh, each club will have about 50 to 70 active members and about 70% are older people, uh, 60 plus, about 70% are women and 70% are people with social and economic disadvantages. Uh, this promotes the inclusive uh, inclusiveness and the intergenerational characteristics which uh, better reflect a community and be able to include the whole community. Uh, and uh, as a result, uh, the club, uh, the, the club's membership is highly inclusive and uh, anyone can be a member of the club and it uh, helps to reduce the generational gaps as well as uh, it brings the people together, increase the solidarity of the community. And uh, for uh, for the club activities, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the needs uh, of older people are very diverse, and older people and community in general are very diverse. So uh, to meet with this, the club has the club is multifunctional with at least uh, eight core components: that is social bonding and control, 
and this uh, this first activity helps reduce the loneliness and uh, provides the social care and increase the mental well-being of older people and the community members with uh, songs and dances and games and home visits and it increases the connection the bond uh, the social the social bond among community members uh, next is the income security activity area, which uh, provides uh, microcredit to older people and uh, people in need to invest in business models to improve, to improve their household income. And in this activity area, it promotes the, uh, it promotes the sharing among uh, people. Uh, we have you know, income, income support groups, like uh, for, for example, chicken raising group where people will share experience in raising chicken or doing business uh, to uh, help improve their livelihood. And the club will also provide training on um, age-friendly livelihood models to members. And uh, next is the healthy and active aging activity area, which the club will provide, uh, will promote uh, we promote healthy lifestyles like practicing, practicing physical exercise daily or uh, taking a proper nutrition and uh, removing uh, bad uh, lifestyles like smoking or dressing bad lifestyle like smoking or drinking. And also the club will provide communication on self-care knowledge so that people I know how to take care of themselves and their family members, especially for uh, members who have uh, NCDs and other diseases to better monitor and take care of themselves. And the club also organized monthly health screening of blood pressure, weight, um, weight, um, the body mass index to uh, inform members of their uh, basic health indicators and, in, and advise them to go to uh, to go to medical facilities when there are symptoms of disease. So it helps with detecting early, um, early symptoms of disease for to avoid uh, complication in the future. And also the club organized um, annual health checkup at least two times per year that the clubs will collaborate with the commune health station and the health sector to provide a checkup for um, for you know, the club members as well as the community members. And uh, the health checkup is carried out directly at the club meeting venue or in the other village so that all, uh, all people can come to the checkup and have their health uh, checked by the local doctors. And um, the club also uh, encourage members to buy health insurance uh, or support uh, difficult uh, disadvantaged uh, people to get access to health insurance. The next activity at the club is uh, community-based care. And uh, these are carried out by both uh, the club recruit, home care volunteers, and carry out need assessment to match home care volunteers with people who are in need, of, in need of care. And also the club, uh, apart from sending volunteers, the club also provide other uh, in-cash or in-kind uh, uh, support to the needy uh, community members. And I will go into a bit more details in the later half of my uh, presentation. Um, other activities include their self-help and community support. So for older people, it's very important to have a sense of belonging and, and, and supporting the community. And they have a very high social responsibility and a aspiration to contribute. So for every month, the club will discuss to, uh, to, discuss to uh, find uh, resources and find solutions to support at least uh, one difficulty case in the community. The support can be either cash or sending volunteers or helping with uh, labor support or any kind of support that the club together will uh, come and will discuss and uh, will uh, discuss among themselves and to um, share, to send the resources to those most in need in their community. It is another way to show that the local community members will best understand their community and will be able to coordinate the local resources to those most in need. And the club also have activities to support the community as a whole, such as cleaning the village roads, uh, growing 
flowers, uh, cutting uh, their branches before storms or any or any other activities to uh, support the community. And through our uh, through the implementation, we have received feedbacks from uh, that uh, community that have ISHC uh, really transform uh, and to be more uh, bonded uh, to increase the solidarity and understanding and sympathy among the members among community members. Uh, lifelong learning it's uh, an uh, uh, highlight uh, activity area of the IAS HSC model because it provides knowledge to uh, it provides knowledge and skills and training uh, capacity buildings opportunities for uh, older people and the community members uh, through uh, various uh, channels either to direct communication sending materials uh, or study tours and other visit trips uh, it is uh, important for the club to provide a continuous education and knowledge to the members uh, because lifelong learning also contributes to mental well-being and it helps uh, older people uh, to uh, not left behind and uh, be able to also um, to be able to catch up and especially access to technology is also an activity under this uh, uh, component uh, that it increase older people's access to using uh, technology. Um, rise in entitlement, each club established a system to monitor the uh, implementation of uh, policies and programs at the village level. And when they spot that anyone in the village needs help or needs legal support, the club will uh, provide help or connect with the local authority or authorized bodies to provide these services. Many times, uh, older people and their families do not have full understand of their rights and benefits and having the having the monitoring system at the club will, uh, will uh, better uh, translate the policies at the grassroots levels. And also it is a channel to connect a local authority with the community members. For uh, each year, the club is uh, designed to organize at least two dialogues between uh, community members and the local authority and other related stakeholders. So the club could be understand as a bridge to connect the people and the policy makers. And last but not least, the club has the resource mobilization uh, component. So instead of providing uh, support uh, to the club, the, the, the uh, model implementers will provide training and support the club to generate their own incomes, uh, resources, and the club will uh, the club will decide uh, decide on their own how to uh, use the resources and uh, the the older the club, the more resources they can mobilize because uh, their reputation increases with time. And when uh, older, when local community they understand about the benefits of the club, then they will want to support the club. So it is a way that uh, as long as the club is. Uh, as long as the club is managed effectively, uh, the, res the, the resources to um, operate the club will, can be found locally. And this is a way to uh, mobilize the resources from the community level uh, to uh, support with the uh, continuous uh, implementation of such, I of such model. So these are the uh, comprehensive uh, components of the club uh, model and um, ones may ask uh, one may ask or oh, how can one uh, model has so many different activities will it create like difficulty in managing the clubs uh, are there are there too many activities and uh, details uh, actually these components are synergy with each other and uh, they uh, have link with each other and by only by having such a well-rounded uh, activity areas can we provide the whole package of uh, support to our person and uh, community members. Um, so as a result, uh, this is one of the things that make the ISHC model stand out from conventional model, who, which only focuses on one to two, acti one to two activity areas. 
And uh, these are the yes, different care services that a club uh, can provide to beneficiaries. Uh, firstly, it's the social care. So uh, joining the club or having a club in your village is uh, supports with uh, reducing the loneliness because the clubs bring people together for befriending and for um, creating the sense of uh, creating a sense of solidarity. And uh, the club send uh, the club organize uh, social activities for members like singing or dancing, or poetry, uh, or for people who are bedridden and homebound. The club send volunteers. Uh, to, 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 to these needy members to make friends, provide information, update on what's happening in the community by telling stories, reading newspapers and books, and provide escort service. Uh, when the person feels better, the volunteers will help that person you know, getting on the wheelchair to get out of the house, go into the temple, to the church, or to visit friends, or go to the market. And uh, during uh, our implementation, we have heard many stories of change after uh, having the club uh, from a person who, is, who has been blind uh, since, the, since she was young because of the sickness, she became blind. And then the club sent volunteers to her and she said that after meeting with the volunteers, I feel like I have new eyes and the volunteers have become my eyes and now I understand what's going on in the community and that makes me very happy. So this is very important uh, and it's also a, an activity highly uh, recognized of the club by the community members. Bisunga, uh, and can I ask you yes. to wrap up your presentation in about three minutes because we, yeah, we, we've spent about 20 minutes now. I know you have yes. many slides left, but uh, we we do have some questions for you later. So maybe you can wrap up in three minutes, please. Yes. Okay. Um, so for other care services, the club provide put in personal care. So you can see the pictures here, doing with housework or helping with personal hygiene and the healthcare. So the club link with the local doctors, uh, local doctors, including retired uh, doctors to provide uh, healthcare services to those in need. And it could be rehabilitation exercise or helping with meditation management and massage and uh, living support as well to uh, mobilize resources to support with uh, rice, with food, assistive device and house renovation and many other activities as well. So all of these are uh, done uh, with the joint effort of the club members, the club leaders, the local authority and other stakeholders in the community. Uh, without the club as a foundation and a co coordinating body in the community, it's really hard to, you know, to first to spot where the needs, where the, where the disadvantaged cases need, what they need, and also typical to mobilize and coordinate the local resources. So having a club in the village is like having a, a center, a support center to provide a such, to monitor and provide such a support. Um, for the club is financially sustainable because the club can generate its own incomes, as I introduced before, and it has at least four different uh, types of income resources uh, from the interest from the revolving loan fund. That's why I say the club needs the income security and uh, resource mobilization activity component to be sustainable and comprehensive. If the club just provide health and care services or health and care component, it will not be able to self-sustain uh, without these uh, income resources. And uh, other small membership fee, local fundraising, and also collective livelihood models, where the clubs will invest in uh, business models and uh, the in profit from that model will be invested back in the club fund. And these are some uh, some impact results of the club. Uh, of, this is uh, from the interview with more than 8,500 club uh, club members from a project supported by Koika and Heritage Korea in from 2018 to 2020, we improved uh, not only really healthier, but also happier, more confident and improved the local solidarity. And the club is recognized uh, not only nationally, but also internationally. And now currently being implemented and replicated in other countries as well. Uh, 
in other countries uh, as well. And uh, so for the lesson learned, the ISHC model can contribute and meet the growing care need of the community, especially in low and lower middle income country. And the club also uh, established uh, and improved the link between the community and local authority and other uh, stakeholders. And it focuses on, uh, and it addresses not only uh, the needs of the current older people, but also future older people with, uh, prevent, with prevention, uh, with prevention, and it delays the time that we need the care uh, um, and uh, helps people live healthily. And also, uh, the club investing in the club model will provide the. It's a one model, but it has com comprehensive uh, services to uh, the local community, and uh, it is also managed by the community themselves. So it is something that it is highly adapted and uh, it promotes, uh, it empowers the role of older people in uh, meeting their care needs and also contribute to the uh, development of the society. Um, the club, uh, as introduced, was implemented in, piloted in Vietnam in, two, in 2006, but will continue to evolve. It will not stop at this moment because it will continue to uh, be improved to meet with the new and uh, the new situation and the new demands of people. And because the club is uh, a foundation, so it's easy to integrate other activities in the club as well. And uh, especially with the new situation such as COVID-19 or the climate change, uh, having a club model at the village level will help increase the resilience of the community to such uh, ever-changing situation. Uh, that is the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your excellent uh, presentation on this very comprehensive model of a club uh, in Vietnam. And hopefully all the speakers will uh, stay with us uh, to entertain some questions we have for you uh, later on. Uh, now we are ready to move to the next country, Japan. And we have three speakers for one project. And uh, let me introduce uh, each speaker. Uh, the first, uh, I, I don't know the order of the speakers, but we have three uh, names. Uh, the first uh, presenter is uh, Professor Natapat Saboro of Tamasat University. And she's the faculty of social administration in the university. And she's a, a, a social worker by uh, training. And uh, she has been doing her research and working with many communities for 15 years until uh, she, uh, one of her studies could be the policy for promoting the quality of life in one center organized by a local organization in Thailand. So she uh, has been uh, enhancing her abilities about community development and innovation program. Uh, from her experience working with these issues in the community, she has uh, expertise, especially in the elderly issue, and uh, she has been working as a consultant for many community programs. Uh, the second uh, speaker is Ms. Titina Nakpu. Uh, she, she's a, a, a MD in Thailand in one of the municipalities, Buing Ito. She's a medical doctor at the uh, Department of Public Health and Environment. And she has a, a, a background in medicine, as I, I just mentioned. And her research topic for her uh, master's degree is self-reliance, health empowerment, health literacy, and happiness of older people. So she has been working in the field of aging and um, medical services. And she has been involved with this uh, project, uh, which is called the Strong Program. And the third speaker is Ms. Tomoyo Suzuki. Uh, she's the project coordinator of Nuzezaka Glocor. And she has, it's the NGO which promotes the community-based elderly care projects in Japan and Thailand. And she has been involved in a research uh, in community-based uh, elderly care activities, both in urban and rural regions. So uh, her, the, the the project of the team is community-based elderly care activities by the Residents Association in Yokohama City, Japan. Now I'd like to invite the first speaker to the floor.
the order in the program is Mrs. Suzuki, uh, so I suppose that she's be, she'll be the first presenter. Yes, thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Tomoya Suzuki, a project coordinator from the, one of the Japanese NGOs, Nogetaka Global. So I will share my slide. Yes. So today, I want to introduce the community-based elderly care activities by the resident association in Yokohama City, Japan. Yokohama City is located in the middle part of Japan and the south part of Tokyo facing the ocean. The population of Yokohama City is about 3.7 million. Focusing on our community-based elderly care activities, the field is in the West Ward Resident Association number four in Yokohama City. And their population is about 15,000 and the aging rate is 25% currently. So this area has many characteristics which can be the barriers for residents to live, such as the narrow roads, dense wooden houses, and the sloping land. Because of these such geographical characteristics, it is difficult to access the transportation by bus, and also this area is vulnerable to the disasters as the barriers to the fire trucks and the evacuation routes. Of course, these characteristics can make the elderly person challenging to go outside because of the limited access to the neighbor stores and the physical difficulties walking around. So based on this context, the area of the Westward Resident Association Number no. 4 tries to foster the collaboration of various sectors, especially the mixture of the residence-based and theme-based organizations. Different from the public sectors like the local government, resident association number, resident associations and the resident welfare support association are composed of the residents. And uniquely in this area, they are cooperating friendly to work for the overlap content of their activity. More than that, the theme-based NGOs and CSOs, such, such as the environmental conservation or education organizations, can also collaborate with the resident-based organization. So this collaboration of various sectors is usually difficult in other parts of Japan because of the conflicts among the different visions or concepts. So the resident association number four have achieved its community-based activities thanks to the positive interaction and collaboration among the different types of the organization. So these are the examples of the resident-based events in this area. Community integrated the festivals, sports, sports festival, and the Christmas concert, and so on. And residents also created the disaster hazard prevention map by themselves. Such local community initiative activities can also raise the disaster risk management literacy of residents experiencing the fire extinction, the emergency cooking, and the evacuation training. So, in terms of the community-based elderly care system in this area, the uniqueness here is the home visit and the monitoring of elderly persons by various types of the volunteers. From the perspective of this resident-based association, conditions of the elderly persons are categorized into three groups based on the level of need for nursing and caring. Different types of the resident-based volunteers including the senior clubs or neighborhoods support the elderly person based on these categories. By doing so, the health and welfare volunteers called Minsei-in in Japanese can focus on their caring for the people most in need the care. So not only such medical caring and nursing, but also the opportunities of gathering and sharing time together are very important for the community-based elderly care. As the photo shows, outside meal party or health checkup is held through the residents' initiatives. 
So such events can be the opportunities to confirm the elderly's condition and safety, revitalize overall activities at one local district, and learn how to prepare food in case of the emergencies. So because such open events are held close to their houses, it is easy for many residents to participate. Through such activities, community members can become more interested in the welfare of the elderly people. So finally, these are the examples of activities among elderly persons during the COVID-19 pandemic. Although it has been a difficult time to have the face-to-face -face events, Residents Association Number 4 fosters the opportunities for online interaction and activities which can make elderly persons inside their houses can feel the connection with the outside. So this is the end of my presentation. I hope the community-based elderly activity in Yokohama City, Japan can be your new perspective on thinking about the human life of elderly persons. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your uh, model of residence participation. And now I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Nakpu from Thailand to uh, talk about her project in Thailand. Hi everyone, I am a medical professional at Dungito Municipality, taking responsibility for the project, which can be simply called the STRONG program. This program is a community-based integrated program for the, the elderly in Dungito Municipality. Today's presentation is divided into five parts, consisting of first, uh, introduction, Second, strong program explanation. Third, program network. Fourth, key success. And the last one, summary. First of all, I would like to introduce everyone to the areas under the regulation of Bungito Municipality. Bungito City is located in Panyaburi District, Pumtani Province, which is only 20 kilometers away from the capital of Bangkok. It occupies a total area of 15.394 square kilometers and is sectioned into four communities with the total population of 32,880 among which there are 4,256 adult, older adults and 467 older adults with disabilities accounting for 40%. In this slide, the number of the aging population is classified by Thai into 92.6% of being socially active, 5.1% of being homebound, and 2.3% of being bedridden. Next, I will explain about the STRONG program. It's a program which is conceptualized by the word STRONG, meaning elderly with strong hearts, it conveys the meaning of physical and mental healthiness. The thing that the municipality have always emphasized is the development of aging populations of our groups, not only those active ones, to ensure that they have the capacity to benefit the community and society. Even when the person is a dependent elderly person, he, she can also contribute to common interest. The municipality have tried to promote the strong model in three dimensions, including strong program, strong innovation, and strong community. You can notice here that to provide services with an emphasis on integration in this community, there are three key components. First component, community-based approaches where the municipality encourages communities to think, initiate, and participate with the municipality in different processes, without thinking together, jointly planning, working together, or monitoring and evaluation. So, 
second component, integrated services at elderly care in communities by focusing that all types of the elderly need services that address their problems and needs, emphasizing the integration of the municipality and the people sector. Third component, comprehensive care and services for the elderly are provided. Services provided by the municipality consist of community center, daycare, medical center and rehabilitation and home visit. As for the program network, it can be said that it is the strength of this program. It's because there are two levels of networking, which are the community level and the non-community level. At the community level, it consists of elderly hubs, networks of aging populations in each village, center committee, local universities, the non-national education, etc. And at the non-community level, it includes Thammasat University, Yukawara Municipality, and Nogisaka Protocol. In this year, 2022, we also have an additional network, JICA, to join the project on the development of local authorities of a community-based integrated elderly care model through the networking in Thailand for two years. Finally, for the key factor the, that makes the project successful, I would like to mention here that people in the community are the most important factor to drive and make the project run more efficiently. Therefore, it is, it is, it is important to make the community aware, have the right knowledge to manage one's health and create motivation to let them know how important and useful is being a strong elderly person under the slogan, the motivation to take care of themselves to take care of others and to take care of own community. That brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Next, welcome to presentation by Assistant Professor Natapat Salobon. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Uh, now I'd like to invite uh, Professor Sarobon uh, to compare these two projects, uh, future consideration from community-based elderly care initiatives in Japan and Thailand. Hello. Can you turn the microphone? Yes. Just a moment, please. Okay, I'd like to share again. Okay, first, um, first of all, let me give you uh, about the basic idea of today's presentation. Uh, it's uh, it is based on my experience when I work as a technical advisor for the strong program at Bungito municipality, which is you have heard about before from medical doctor Titinan. While working with the municipality, I have done research study, knowledge management, and cultivate knowledge from them. So for today's presentation, I would like to share with you two points of future consideration which is include research-based and community-based consideration. For the first one, the future consideration are derived from community-based work experience. It, is, uh, it was found that there were many aging population in the community who did not have access to service. Even though the service arrangement is very well prepared, focusing on being community-based and promoting public engagement. For this group of people in Thailand, we call homebound, homebound group, aging adults. In this picture, show that there are some elderly who have a physical problems, but in strong program, we try to promote that every group of older adults can join in the community activity together. Personally, I do not prefer the term of homebound because it is too restrictive. Uh, I would prefer the group at risk because 
when the group does not participate in health and social activities, they are prone to risk and they are likely to become dependent on the adult. The future consideration is to promote balanced activity between the group at least and healthy groups. This is because if it succeeds, it means that the problem of the elderly dependent will be less and slow down. And the next for the second one, or the future consideration derived from the study entitled The Development of an Effective Program for Promoting the Model of Active Aging in Thailand, Utilizing Care Prevention Program from Japan. The research was done from 2020 to 2022. Uh, the study was conducted in both Thailand and Japan. From the research, it was found that the most services in Thai community focus to active and bed bound group, but it is not providing enough services for the homebound groups. In addition, the staff who work in the community they are not be able to classify clearly that who is the homebound, whereas in Japan. In Japan, this group is called risk group. The risk group is the group between ordinary group and special group who need the intermediate care or rehabilitation care or prevention care for the recovery of their condition and prevent the serious symptom. In Thailand, we have the long-term care system, which is the budget was supported for the caregiver by the government. The program was initiated by the community. It means that uh, if the community is strong enough, the program will be effective. However, if the community is weak, the program will be ineffective too. According to the area-specific research, there are three future considerations obtained consisting of, uh, number one, promote the concept of active aging. Number two, using family and community model. And number three, creating the deterioration assessment. With the, uh, with the respect to concept of active aging, I would like to say based on the area specific research, it was found that a large number of aging population could not overcome obstacles, both physical and social ones, and achieve an active aging state. From my review, it was found that some elderly did not attend the program in the community because they have a health, mental problems, and they are poor. This group of the aging population was not interested in using the community bed services. Provide why some of them could not access the services due to the certain limitation. In the future, I think it is necessary to prioritize the two in parallel. So I would like to propose that other future community based programs that are set on the active aging concept should be considered in terms of both positive and negative aspect. In addition, it is not noticeable by the research that the community usually work with the same face of the older adult. Thus, it is suggested that if we wish to increase or expand the services, what to forget will not only be how to strengthen older adults, but also how to get rid of the limitation and obstacle in living life of the older adult, especially for those with the chronic disease or suffering from the psychological or brain health or other deficiency. Why obstruct them from becoming an active aging? And number two, when asking how to promote family and community participation, the result revealed that the future consideration should involve with family and community in the process. It should not be just about being community-based, but for the future, 
program uh, for the for future program family counseling drawing participation from family and providing collaborative activity to foster family relationship should be initiated in this regard a key obstacle again active aging is family conflict so we have to think about how to solve the family conflict is important. And number three, for future consideration, the elderly deterioration assessment system should be developed, whether in physical, mental ability, nervous system or brain. From the result of the research, it was found that the system referred to assessment form assessment tool, assessment technology, and capacity development of local practitioners to assess the deterioration of the elderly. This is because the result of the assessment address the real problems, and such problems do lead to the design of the various activity in the community. In Japan, the failed checking was applied to many cities to many city in Japan. However, we also have that in Thailand, but it is usually called basic screening test in the community. I could say the basic screening test is not enough. It is only for the screening, but it could not detect the deterioration of the elderly. So in summary, future consideration uh, consists for promoting the new concept or the model of active aging, using the family and community model and creating the deterioration assessment. Finally, I would like to say uh, that our resources in the community is limited, but elderly need is unlimited. So not only community-based approach, but also we have to promote networking approach I think it's very important. Thank you for your attention today. Thank you. Uh, now we uh, have one final uh, presentation left. And uh, actually, our session had about 180 minutes, two and a half hour. And so far, we have used uh, almost two thirds of it. And we have about 40 minutes left. And I would really like to spend some time uh, comparing and uh, discussing on these different models that we just have learned. So I'd like to ask our last speaker to be a little bit uh, brief. Uh, her His project is on housing complex as one big family, and I'm sure his, he will bring us very interesting uh, story as well. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Gensuke Sugawara. He's the CEO of the uh, Gruntu Visa uh, is a, a co company, uh, and he has been working uh, in Japan, but he also spent some year in Denmark. Uh, after working in the advertisement industry, he switched uh, to a career as a uh, physiotherapist and later served as a site coordinator of the Association of the Visiting Nurse Services at Ishinomaki City uh, in Japan. So he has been working as a community development uh, expert, and I would like to invite him to talk about his project on uh, One Big Family. Uh, good afternoon. I will start our presentation. Uh, title is uh, the Housing Complex as One Big Family. Uh, before starting our pro presentation, let me introduce myself. My name is Kensuke Sugahara, Chief Executive Officer uh, of Green to Be Incorporated. I was born in Japan uh, in 1979. I spent my junior high and high school year in Denmark. I was impressed the uh, by the idea of supporting well-being. Then I became a physical therapist while working at rehabilitation hospital. The Great East Japan earthquake occurred. I quit my job and started working uh, as a disaster relief coordinator. 
uh, in disaster striking area. At that time, I became keenly aware of the importance of uh, connect, uh, connection with neighbor on a daily basis. After returning to my hometown, I started Gruntobi Incorporated. As I just told you in my self-introduction, the uh, origin of our activity, activities is supporting disaster striking area by the Great East Japan earthquake. We experienced supporting activities for those affected by the Great East Japan earthquake, social infra in infrastructure such as electricity, water and road, uh, was swept away by the tsunami. The city was completely out of service. The connection between people and mutual help between neighbors was the support, support for their emotions and wishes to uh, continue living. We learned that communities in which people were close within their everyday lives could cooperate quickly. Uh, conversely, communities with a bound took time to collaborate. When people were uh, isolated, we realized the necess necessity to liberalize local communities on an everyday basis. We were inspired and came up with an idea, which is to utilize nursing in housing complexes as a mature aid device. The catchphrase for this idea is the housing complex as one big family. From now on, uh, Sugiyama, uh, uh, our, co uh, our company member, uh, will explain our project. Hi, um, my name is Shun. Um, I will explain our project instead of uh, Sugihara from now. Um, let's back to the description on the slide. Uh, we learn a lot from the experience of uh, earthquake, disaster, and wondered what was really important for the future. So, in order to create a community of people with that um, mindset, we needed a place with the have function to make it happen. At the time, a new service called Small Multifunctional In-Home Nursing Care was also created in Japan. This is a new service that allows users to flexibly um, customize the uh, three services. Uh, one is the uh, home visit care, day services, and um, stay at the place to meet their needs. For those of us who want to create a safe community and society, the elderly are not the only recipients of the service. We thought that we could support not only the elderly but also the lives of a wide range of generations by using a room in a housing complex that already exists. Everyone living in the housing complex, especially the elderly, use this place as a third place. It's possible to a uh, variety of people to live flat beyond the both boundaries of uh, staff, users, and local uh, residents. This culture can maximize the dignity of the elderly. Today, um, I would like to share about what we have done so far and what we're doing every day. So our base is a nursing to live together in every everyday life, uh, 239 households and about 500 people live in the housing complex. Grunsby is located on the 6th floor and 7th floor, and Mr. Sugihara lives on the 5th floor. Also the 3rd, 4th, 5th and 8th floors used as room for staff such as a nurse, physical therapist and care workers. After starting Grunsby, over 40 people were moved into living in the same building. Sometimes uh, people misunderstand that we are the owners of this apartment, but we don't. 
we are doing business using one room of the same building as the uh, apartment and housing complex in this picture. People who use our services need to register according to the national system. They live in housing complex or live with the um, individual or family around them. In many cases, it's difficult to live alone because of a dementia or physical condition. Also, they use our services if they, their family cannot help and support them to live alone. This is a table of the level of care for users. In Japan, it's divided into one to five levels depending on the person's medical condition and the degree of uh, dementia. Uh, companies earn income from the country according to their levels. The higher the level, the higher the income. But on the, on the other hand, the amount of the care increase and the difficulty level of the response becomes difficult. Small multifunctional facilities are very flexible, but difficult to operate. They tend not to accept high level people in Japan. We are particular about accepting the highest possible level of people and helping them live in Japan, live in peace. When we take care of ourselves, we value not to be afraid of risks. Many nursing care facilities manage risk well. But is that healthy for the person to live is to face risks. It's the same for the elderly and people with de dementia. Eliminating risks uh, completely also uh, de de deprives a person of dignity. A day when you sit in a wheelchair and stare out, or a day when you try the bodyboard that you want to try while feeling pain. Which do you think was fun before you go to bed? Eat what you want, go where you want to go, and do what you want. That's the root of the power to live. We follow the person to the end, what he or she wants to do, and what he or she wants to challenge while minimizing risk. Uh, what we're going to play back now is uh, what happened this summer. Uh, she is uh, 80 years old and has uh, severe dementia. She doesn't remember uh, um, minutes ago. Half left limb difficult to move due to a cerebral infraction. On this day, we went to the beach to enjoy this summer with the staff. She always get confused about her daily life, but um, when our staff visited her house the next day, she remembered going to the sea with our staff. I'm gonna show you the movie a little bit. She always have to use a, a wheelchair, but in this time she's gonna try to work, but she can't, she couldn't. So staff helped her and they, take, they, took, them, take, they took her to the uh, beach, like this. Like this. That's your next slide. Um, yes. So, on the other hand, it's try, uh, tiring to list, repeat a special daily routine. The proper balance between extra. Extra, um, extraordinary and daily life is living. We are even more particular about the de designing an environment that has a natural daily life. It's more difficult to create an ordinary daily life. In order to make it, you have to understand the person deeply. This is also, um, this is also a video from a TV show. She is 83 years old now and lives in a housing context too. She also has a severe dementia. She visits our place every day and eats together with the staff. Um, I, want, I want to show you to feel that she is uh, enjoying her ordinary daily life from this video. 
the sound is a little bit uh, in Japanese, but just feel her daily life. Her name, her name is Keiko. She is uh, living uh, downstairs together. She has a dementia. She always come to our place to see our staff and to eat food, to do something with the staff. It's like daily life before she start to use uh, elderly care from us like this he, he's uh, our stuff too she always try to cook and make something for stuff for the lunch like that i guess we don't have enough time so i'm gonna show you next slide Okay, um, and also when users has a share house with the stuff in the housing complex, by designing a person's environment and a community, uh, people with severe dementia can continue to live as one person. They are not family members, but they live like family members. If, you, if, if we can protect a person's life in a community, um, they can die in their own house. In, in our efforts, we value that a person can die in his or her own home. Most Japanese want to die at home, but most people actually die in hospitals. In 2019, terminal care was provided to uh, four people and all the four died at home. 100% of the groom to be users died at home, not at uh, health healthcare or nursing homes. The death rate at home in Japan is about 20%. In seven years in groom to be, the death rate of people in the complex who use groom to be is uh, 90. The using of uh, housing complex is not all good. As there are many troubles with the local residents. Uh, dementia users uh, flushed a uh, falling substance into the toilet and broke it. As a result, a leak occurred in the room downstairs and many complaints were filled against us. We broke the toilets in the user's room and it was solved by installing portable toilet. At the same time, we continue to manage the community by expressing apologizes and uh, gratitude to various people living in the community. So um, it is essential to maintain and update the community by repeating these steps. Conflicts are inevitable in the diverse communities. It is necessary to have uh, Cassius will to repeat dialogue with uh, residents and the family members on a daily basis and anticipation of the problems. It's important to deepen martial understanding. So this is uh, one of the method uh, from Denmark to assessment for the users. We, we learn a lot of things from Denmark and this one is also um, kind of the method to build uh, relationships. We believe that trust <clears throat> is more important than knowledge and skill. We are currently um, programming the ideas and the practices that we have been working on. We are using this to promote human resources education for our staff and for other staff in other company too. So in our educational training, we actually visit nursing homes or uh, schools in Denmark. We regularly learn new things and exchange opinions uh, in Denmark too. People can build up a trusting relationship in your own life based on the housing complex. 
and focusing on what each person likes, what to do and what can do. A life in which uh, the human rights of the L tree are protected is created by the Grunsby mechanism. Being closing to those who are important for you and living together with them maximize everyone's vitality. The housing complex as one big family is supporting a life till the end. Respecting together to, to get old their perspectives on life and death to being yourself and to have diverse and flexible values. Recently, however, the concentration of the population has led to a life in which people do not even know each other's faces. Tokyo has the largest population and the highest population in Japan. Shizuoka, for example, Shizuoka prefecture is the neighboring pre prefecture, but ranked uh, 13th in the ranking. There is such a big difference between the city and the countryside. In cities, communities are becoming increasingly sparse, and the economic gap between people is increasing too. There are increasing cases of isolation and loneliness that cannot be supported by the national system under the system in including the elderly. There are many people who cannot be saved under the Japanese system. There is a reality that the national system is not bad, but that, that, um, that the national system alone is not enough. We have been dealing with cases like this recently too. Family members do not have the financial power to support people with dementia. However, the government system does not meet the requirements and does not provide support. Therefore, dementia, wishes, and the neighborhood complain. They are increasingly um, excluded from society. In order to aim for a society where you can live with peace of mind, in addition to systems and rules, uh, you may also need the flexible and personal system. We believe that in order to save people indeed in need, it is sometimes necessary to act beyond national institutions and social rules. Japan's nursing care uh, insurance system is very good, but some people can't save it. Our, our commitment support beyond the framework of rules and generalization is sometimes criticized by society. Systems and rules cannot save people. The more systems are developed, the clearer the boundaries become. As a result, we only deal with users during work hours and otherwise cannot deal with them. A perfect social security system risks weakening a culture of martial support. If the stress of the community weakens, the utilization rate of the national system will increase and the burden on the government will increase. Last slide. The person, the person's presence is uh, shaped by the person around them. Disconnecting from society means denying a person's existence. Only physical care will not be enough for the elderly care. Their self-esteem will be maximized when the when the elderly come into contact with the community and the society through new exchanges and helping others. The housing complex with care, sorry, the housing complex with the with the care functions is the one of the core of a very good city community. The power of a community creates our personal life for all generations. Housing complex uh, can change the world. We always said in the team, always it's okay if you have love. Thank you so much. That's all for today. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much for sharing those wonderful photographs. Uh,
we started with talking about psychological well-being, uh, which is a critical element of human rights of older persons. And uh, today's session focused on how we can build community uh, in order to uh, prevent and, and protect uh, the human rights of all the person. And we were very lucky to go through five different big projects uh, with eight different very distinguished speakers. And now we have only about 15 minutes, which means I have failed in time management today. <laughs> but uh, hopefully uh, what I'd like to do is we have about 14 questions from uh, from uh, the audience and, and different uh, parts of the community. So I would like to ask the organizer to uh, post these questions and try to get uh, responses from all the speakers. And we will try to share these questions and answers uh, later on after this session because uh, these are very important questions and uh, what we need to do is to compare the similarities and differences among these different cases and where uh, we can go from here because we need more of these projects uh, in the future. So what I'd like to do now is to spend, give two minutes to each speaker, each project, to just uh, share uh, impressions and comments from uh, your perspective. So while we're waiting to have all the speakers on the screen uh, to, to join us for the final uh, moments, I'd like to invite uh, our first speakers, uh, uh, President Zhou, to make some comments, like two-minute comments now. Thank you. Uh, yeah, your impressions or any comments that you want to make that you didn't uh, have the chance to speak before. So. Okay. Um, under under the um, under the subject of community building, um, uh, we 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 could discuss the so many various um, project which and responding to reduce the mental health and isolation and loneliness um, in, 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 in those uh, projects we could see the similarity which is that um, just providing services to reduce isolation and loneliness is not enough. Um, I can see that uh, the similarity is that not only the service, but also the community involvement is very important. And we could, we could see the community involvement in many projects. So that's the uh, good lessons learned from these presentations, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, could uh, anyone from Europe uh, share your comments? Um, sure, maybe I'll um, do a quick uh, start um, for the for the Dreamlike Neighborhood project and um, listening to all the other very inspiring projects and insights from um, all over um, the world, <laughs> which is very inspiring. Um, yeah, I I think, and I also take again um, from this the importance to give people the opportunity um, to meet and connect with each other. Um, whether these are concrete local activities or other offers. Um, I think um, this is kind of what, I, um, what I'm again taking also from all the other um, projects and insights um, and to, yeah, to provide spaces for people to connect and meet and organize activities for and with people. Um, and the with is very important here, I believe. Um, so I, yeah, I think it's important to keep um, planting the seeds and um, to speak in our words um, and plant differences according to each context and environment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Elenia, uh, do you have any comments that you'd like to share? 
No, well, I don't want to repeat much uh, further um, other speakers' uh, comments, but um, for me, one of the main takeaway messages is that when you, where we are able to actually give visibility to people who are considered invisible, then we can create some magic and we can, of course, improve uh, their own quality of life, but also the quality of life of, of the communities in which they are they, they, they are living. And that's, uh, that's very precious. And uh, of course, it's something we need to consider um, further dealing with the demographic change and challenges that we are living through. Thank you. Okay, uh, what about uh, Ms. Unga from Thailand? I, I mean, Vietnam, sorry. Yes, uh, thank you to the organizer for putting together so many interesting models from many different countries. And I'm really excited to read the documents later to uh, learn in more details about all of the uh, models. And I think that in all the presentations, we all share the same uh, idea that other people are resources. Uh, and uh, it is important to find way and create a favorable condition for all people to enjoy the, their life and uh, contribute to continue to contribute to um, the family and society. And but at the sort of same time, we take into account the age factor. But I think at the same time, um, before we mention a person, not uh, consider that person an older person, but a citizen in general. And it's important that um, whenever we have uh, models for older people, we understand that this is not aiming you know, to address the age issue or to be built exclusively for an older person, but it is for a citizen of society in general. And we should, um, we should uh, see a person from their contribution and their ability rather than from the age perspective only. And I think it's very, very important that we have such a development model like that. So yeah, another showing. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Suzuki, do you have any comments that you'd like to share? Yes, thank you for today's opportunity. Uh, although the context are different in each country and project, I could understand the importance to create the opportunities where people can participate and also connect community and society for both the physical and mental health of elderly people too. Yeah, okay. thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Nakpu from Thailand. Or maybe she's gone now. Uh, maybe we can hear from Professor Sarobon. Yes, thank you for our, our presenter today. I learned many things from you. And uh, I would like to uh, to share about the, the final the final round about when I work with the community. Uh, I found that the community have uh, many questions with me. For example, they ask the question, how we can increase the number of, of the elderly who participate in the program activity or the activity in the community. But I could not find the answer for them for a long, long time. Uh, until the uh, two, three years ago, I, do the, I did the research and I found that uh, it was confirmed from the research that the various activity is very important to promote the concept of, of active aging and promote the participation from the people in the community. But the practitioner in the community in Thailand could not classify the different characteristics of the older adults. So it had to develop or initiate the appropriate program for the older adults in the community. This is the, uh, my lesson learned from, from working with the community. And the last one, I think, uh, for the, uh, if we working together, you can see that from the our project strong program in Thailand, we work closely together with Thailand and Japan. And I found that it's not only working together, but we have to collaborate. It's bigger than the working, just collaborate and share the knowledge. And uh, we talk, we discuss uh, so often. So I think this is a key success for 
for upgrade or for improve your program in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite someone from uh, our uh, big house, big family uh, group. And I understand that you have uh, somebody who wanted to have it translated uh, from Japanese to English. So, yes. あの、僕らにとって大きかったなと思います。はい。え、あ、he's so um they have been working really hard, but um of course their project isn't per still perfect and they have still a long way to work on. So through these through these um events that they can learn from each other, they would like to brush up on their project and also learning from other countries like Denmark, Thailand and those examples from today like Vietnam as well. So uh, he looks forward to more like mutual learning opportunities. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry that I could not give you uh, more time to uh, explore and, uh, and learn uh, more about these pro uh, projects, but I'm sure that we will keep in touch and try to learn from each other because, as I, as I mentioned, we need more of these projects uh, around the world. And I really like to uh, thank the organizer of this uh, civil society uh, talk concert, uh, the ASEM Global uh, Center, the Global Aging Center uh, on Human Rights of all the persons is a big topic that uh, the organization has been working uh, for a number of years and I think it's a great opportunity for us to uh, network and uh, in the previous session I was a little bit depressed because we were talking about the, the research, the results of the research which shows that older people are really depressed and, and we are experiencing uh, very uh, serious psychological uh, problems and also uh, loneliness and, and uh, depression and isolation. So these were very uh, depressing uh, realities for many of us. But uh, for from the second session on this uh, talk, we learned that there are so many innovative and uh, inspiring projects that have been uh, push forward from our uh, NGOs and, and different sectors of civil society. So I hope that everyone can take uh, more of empowering and encouraging and challenging messages from our session and hope that we can keep in touch and learn from each other in the future as well. Thank you for uh, participating um, in this session and I would like to, I hope that we can see each other uh, later on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Professor Park, for leading this session. Um, as she have mentioned, we were able to hear some of the empowering activities at the grassroots level from the academic um, researchers and also the government officials. So thank you very much uh, once again, Professor Park, for moderating the sessions and also the panelists for sharing their uh, projects as well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes day one here at the forum. And my sincere thanks to all the participants that are tuning in online and offline. As we are to begin day two tomorrow at 1 p.m., please stay tuned. And we'll, we will look forward to see you all once again tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>